Welcome to Ambient Discourses, conversations with musicians and composers who create musical experiences and sonic landscapes. My guest on the program is Daryl Gretsch from Oregon here in the United States, who also operates under the name Pulse Emitter. He has been making music under the name Pulse Emitter for nearly two and a half decades and has recently began creating more placid ambient music under the name Daryl Gretsch in 2022. He has eight releases under his name, and under the Pulse Emitter name has over 30 digital releases on Bandcamp. And since its inception in the early 2000s, has nearly 100 physical releases. His music is wide ranging from experimental synthesis and electronic composition to emotionally driven ambient soundscapes. He's a prolific creator and his music is well worth the active listening experience. Our conversation was intensely gratifying and spanned multiple topics of conversation, including how his technical process for music composition has evolved, the role of technology and artificial intelligence in the creation of music and art, the various depths of creative inspiration, and the art of cultivating community in an ever-isolated music listening environment. Please welcome Daryl Gretsch. Well, Daryl Gretsch, it's so nice to meet you for the first time i have you're a new face to me um both in the ambient circle but just in the broader music community and it's just a privilege to get to know you and to have been able to play some of your music on the relay station and above all it's just i'm really excited to have this conversation and open it up further uh, so that the listeners and so that other even musicians like ourselves can get a chance to know you get to know your music more and i'm it's just a wonderful opportunity to have you here on the program well thanks i'm i'm looking forward to chatting with you so so let's let's just start with some of the the easy stuff how I know that you had operated under the the moniker Pulse Emitter for some years. When did you get started with that? And what was kind of, what precipitated that, that led you to go, hmm, I think I want to try making music. Right. Well, I was making music prior to that. Um, I studied uh, composition, music composition in college uh, in like the 90s and um Started making electronic music then, uh, by way of an elect- a few electronic music courses that they offered there. Um, and for a few years after that, I was just kind of trying different things. Couldn't really find my own voice, and um, just doing different styles. And then um, had some some writer's block, and uh, and then it, it it was around 2002, 2003 that I. Uh, started building a uh, modular synth like from scratch like soldering it together um i was studying electronics at that time and i got really uh inspired by like the noise music uh scene that was going on around that time experimental noise music and and that's when i picked the name and i started doing that kind of music at that project pulse emitter has evolved a lot over over the years it started pretty experimental and atonal and and that's kind of what i needed to kind of uh reset my creativity after after going to music school and uh trying my hand at at different styles it just felt really good to kind of throw away all the music theory and everything i had learned and just start making this this uh more like noise-based music with this really primitive instrument that i that i built so that was kind of the beginning of the, the beginning of of pulse emitter and then over a few years i started uh incorporating uh keyboards you know keyboard synthesizers and getting more into melodic music um which i had been doing previously experimenting you know with uh and 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 studying in school so um it, that project evolved into uh what it is now which is more like um like a I mean, it's an ambient project, but there's it, it's it's uh, kind of progressive, kind of inspired by, I guess, the progressive rock I listen to a lot. There, there's it, it's pretty intricate. It's it's pretty complex, but this music that I do now is as as Daryl Gretsch over the past two years is 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 much more, um, I guess I could say minimal ambient. It's 
it's it's a lot uh less complicated and i it it really has been um an exercise in like reducing my my ego mm-hmm. and uh and making this 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 sort of music that's just really spacey and i've, I've always loved that kind of music and uh and you know it's actually taken a some time and some effort to get to a point where I can remove my ego enough to do it without like, you know, adding parts and, you know, making things more, um, you know, what more was, layered. What was, what led up to this, uh, for lack of a better word, an awakening that the ego was an issue and that you wanted to try and minimize that in your music? What, what led up to that? It's a good question. Um, I listen to so much, so much kind of uh, this sort of deep space ambient music. Um, I have for years, and and I think I just finally got to a point where I, where I said I I want to do this. I, I I had tried before, and and uh, always kind of fell short. I think because I just tended to make things more complicated and more layered and I just finally got to a point where it's like I want to do this and I I can do this and the way that I the way that I did it was to not like uh sit down in the studio and start you know composing and using my you know using my head so much to get creative and clever it was it was by using the iPad initially and just uh using some music music production apps that are very easy to use and just kind of in a casual casual setting just like on the couch or or maybe like uh uh sitting in my car like on on lunch break at work or something and just kind of starting some 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 music and just kind of having a really relaxed approach while composing it which uh is is what turned out to be the way that I was able to make the music as kind of relaxed and casual as it is. Would you say that it was almost like a, a meditative experience for you, like an extension of? Yeah, 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 exactly. Like uh, the actual composition process was like relaxing and and uh, kind of meditative. Yeah, uh, whereas you know that's not always the case when you're. When you're composing music that has that has a lot of parts, and you know it's, it's you know it's it's still of course a, a creative thing, but uh, but um, yeah, I I, I gotta hand it to like uh, the iOS, you know, the, the the iPad, you know, music ecosystem. There's like all these, you know, different apps that uh, you know, they don't do it for you, but they make it easy. It's just like like it's easier than ever to 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 make electronic music without having to like uh have it be such a, a technical thing like right. in the 90s when i got into it programming sense was like you got this little screen you know this tiny little screen the size of like a matchbook and you're like going through all these menus programming it and, and it was just a, it was a lot a lot more work and now it's um i mean i fully embrace it i the easier it can be without having it you know do the music for you i don't use like pre-made loops or stuff like that but it's like the, the better the interface and the ipad is a wonderful interface because it's a, you know it's a big touch screen it's just very intuitive and if you, you know the easier it is to get your ideas out you know and create and, and and created the better because i'm sure you know other creative people listening to this would know that there's times when you you feel creative you want to make music and then you get caught up in the technical part and you can actually risk losing that initial spark right and that sucks <laughs> so right where um where have where do you typically look for inspiration are there uh are there things in nature or things in the, the cosmos or what what typically becomes like your fuel that helps uh instigate the creative process for you yeah, nature is a big part of it. I live in Oregon here. Um, I go hiking quite a lot. Um, I'm a big I'm a big fan of nature, um, so I am inspired inspired by that. Um, just like looking at the clouds, for example. Um, I last year I, I did a whole album just about the clouds. Yeah. 
by the way um, that was a really good album um i really <laughs> enjoyed it a lot and for me it had this um I, so i was walking my dog and i love to listen to other people's music while i'm walking my dog we go for really long walks and yeah and for me it conjured up this beautiful sensation and picture of like if the aurora borealis was in a full spectrum of color and not just you know greens or blues but it it yeah. felt like this interweaving of colorful mist and space and just it was so that's wow, cool. chef's kiss to that it was, it was a nice <laughs> thank album. you thanks that, that's a that's a really it's some really cool feedback but yeah i mean i mean sometimes i have like like a I, ideas that aren't really from nature they're just right. like really kind of uh, like ethereal almost like just this sort of thing just right just right out of the imagination like i don't know i don't know where that exists uh but it's you know i i kind of like the idea of creating music that's it's like really uh really heavenly in a way that that just takes you somewhere that that doesn't really exist but i mean i have some dark you know dark albums too that sure. are kind of very sub subterranean i like i like the sort of black uh empty vibe as well sometimes yeah. too well yeah. robert rich once made a comment um when i was when i was having a conversation with him he he made the comment that you you almost you you need kind of those darker more difficult spaces to help contrast with the beautiful and savory sensations that you have in life so you, you almost need yeah. those things as a companion to help yeah. give you the perspective that oh wow this is really beautiful and oh this is really difficult and this is really dark and it's a painful to listen to and it it makes those other moments yeah. all the sweeter I right think. right and i mean that that's it's kind of the the human experience i guess i mean no one's got a you know perfectly positive or negative you know experience and likewise i mean some people make nothing but dark music and you know one can do whatever they want of course but like i always feel like isn't that a bit much <laughs> darkness <laughs> i don't know i don't know i like a mix for sure and, and i really like i really like is in between spaces where where it's, it's you know it's like um kind of beautiful but with with some melancholy you know yeah. like uh you mix it all like, together. Yeah, yeah. Have it have all those feelings at the same time. I I really like that too. Let's check out a track from one of Daryl's latest releases, Frozen Waste. This track is entitled In Blackness, here on Ambient Discourses.
So tell me more about this. Um, what in your creative space when when you're creating are you've so you mentioned that you use kind of you use the iPad uh, and numerous apps. Are there any apps in particular that have been just absolutely essential or indispensable for you when you're creating? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I usually start the music on the iPad and, and I'll make um, I'll make like a short piece of music, almost like almost like a loop. And then I'll often uh, load that up into another instrument and, and uh, apply processing to it, which which kind of goes with that whole ego reduction thing. Like you write something and then you you destroy it, you blur it. And smear it beyond comprehension yes. to make an effect you know like i would kind of have difficulty doing that before it's like i wrote this i don't want to you know like erase it into you know into a blur but um but um yeah there's um on the ipad i i, I use core gadget a bit because it's a it's a very easy um interface it has a ton of built-in synths it, it it's kind of like an all-in-one program uh with a sequencer and a bunch of synths built in and it, it makes it once you learn it, which t which took a little bit, I, I am now able to kind of just get ideas out really quickly. Um, but then I always want to process them because it, it has kind of a, a kind of a basic sound. Um, all the instruments in it are very simple, but that that's a good one. There's a few uh, sequencer apps in um, in the iPad that I really like because they're they're kind of generative in a way. One of them is called Fugue Machine. And there's another one called uh, Cycle, which is spelled C Y K L E. And it, and and like with with Fugue Machine, you 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 put in a melody, you, you enter it, and then it plays it back, um, and you can select how it's played back, whether slow or fast or backwards, and what octave. And there's different different. I mean, it plays back with different playheads, like going to different synthesizers, or to the same synthesizer. So it kind of creates uh, a a fugue basically uh based on one melody um the uh the other app i mentioned cycle is 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 one where you can um where uh like pitch and and volume and all these different aspects of a melody are split apart into different sequencer channels so you can kind of create a melody that as it goes it evolves and changes um so it's kind of generative in that way. And I like that because when ambient music is too melodic, I, I it kind of detracts. I mean, I love Vangelis, but it's like it's very melodic and, and it's hard for me to like really space out if there's um mm. a strong melody occurring. So I, I, I really like this idea of writing a melody that's not much of a melody. Um, and then I'll take these bits uh, and I'll put them into uh, my MacBook and I use... Logic Pro, but anyway, there's this program called uh, Omnisphere. It's a pretty popular uh, synthesizer uh, plugin, but it has a, a, a granular engine, and that thing is is something I really like because you can take a little loop or even like a minute long loop of something that that I made, something that that, that you recorded, and then uh, process it using that synth with with the granular engine, and then all the built-in effects and filters and everything that that synth has, and just turn it into something totally different sounding. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been doing a lot of that, especially on these last two albums that, um, that are coming out, which, uh, where I, you know, compose something just to be processed into oblivion later by, by, um, some of these, you know, some of these, uh, apps that I use. It's amazing how far technology has come to be able to enable us to rapid in rapid succession create these amazing amazing spatial landscapes um with almost little effort i so you know yeah because i don't live under a rock necessarily it the the ai universe has really taken the music industry by storm and allowed mm. creators to create things well more or less create things in rapid fire succession how do you feel about the use of ai when with creating music do you do you have any particular feelings about that about 
how AI has kind of been introduced as an additional generative music component. Um, I guess I'm not very knowledgeable about what actually, I mean, how much AI is, is, is being used at the moment. Are, are there like tools that musicians yeah. are using that, that, that are AI? Yeah, based? there's, I don't know of any specifics off, off the top of my head, but there's, there's, um, AI driven stuff that helps, uh, create drum rhythms or full musical landscapes. Heck, you could probably even generate a full musical composition with AI alone. Right, um, right. So maybe reframing the question, where do you find the balance between the tools that help us create something versus the creative spark inside you that helps guide the direction of music composition where where's that balance for you yeah yeah i see what you're saying um it's it is kind of tricky um i mean as an electronic musician i am inspired by the technology i'll get right. some new instrument and and it'll give me a new idea but that idea is coming from me mm -hmm. and then i program the instrument to do what I want it to, to, to get the vision that I have. Uh, so it's still music made by a person using tools. And I'm sure all these arguments people are having about using AI is the same ones they had about using computers for, for creativity or, or, you know, using like, uh, any other instrument that, that made things easier in the past. And then everyone just gets used to it and and i think the one of the key things is even if it does you know has gotten easier and easier to make music you can still immediately hear when music's good and when it's bad and when someone put effort and feeling into it and when it says something from one human to another compared to someone who just did the easiest thing i mean you you can tell so I'm not worried about it in that regard. I think people using AI to generate music in the future, like for commercial purposes, is going to be a big thing. Because, I mean, it's already like that with, with art. Uh, if you need some, you know, some basic, some company needs some basic art, you know, they're it's no longer going to be hiring an artist because they'll just be able to use AI to do that. Um, you know, I... I follow some some artists like on Instagram who, who are doing interesting things with AI, but they are the ones with the vision. They are the ones using it as a tool. So I'm cool with it. Uh, I think someday it'll get so good that that they'll just be AI that 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 does the the creativity from the ground up and it's at a high level. And yeah, that's that's a little it's a little disturbing. But I mean, with that, I'm sure we'll be movements where people are like i i don't want ai i right. i i i don't i i reject this right They're just like there are young people today who are like i am not on social media i you know i hate this stuff and i'm not going to do it so um do yeah you, it's interesting to to watch for sure as, right. as it progresses in real time <laughs> well and to your point i think it is how you use the tools and how you use them to assist in the creative process. I mean, I, for example, I use chat GPT quite frequently, but I use it as a tool to help remove some of the, the mental roadblocks or to give me the framework to get started and go, Oh yeah, totally that. And then you yeah. can expound upon it with your own experience, the own, your own wisdom that you've acquired from the, you know, your years of experience. And yes. And, I think it can be done the same way musically. You, you get get that initial kernel of um, inspiration or something that helps you think outside of yourself, and then allows you to continue on with the creative process using other yeah. tools. Right. Yeah. I, I I heard the the way of thinking of it that that is kind of like having a partner, like a working partner. And it is kind of like that, Some, something to bounce ideas off of. And I mean, yeah, yeah. Right. And 
I mean, shoot, I've used <laughs> I've used Chat GPT to kind of help me figure out. All right, if I, I I'm going to apply for this artist grant, what what is what is the outline that I need to come up with, and or if how how can I be a better interviewer? What are some questions? <laughs> You're not not just questions, but how to go about these things, you know? Yeah. And musically speaking, you can go. All right, um, help me come up with a, a concept that um, illustrates this musically, and then from there on, you start to develop the necessary vocabulary. You start to pick up on the maybe the keywords or the key sounds or the framework, and then you have now suddenly all these additional tools that you can go. Oh, this really makes this really opens up the possibilities. Yeah, and 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 just like with any other uh, tool, you can reject some of the ideas. Totally. Or be like, oh, that's 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 laughably bad. But oh, but this other idea, that's pretty good. I hadn't thought of that. Absolutely. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. I think that's probably the experience of many people that use ChatGPT, at least, or other AI products. Right. When they first start out, they go, oh, that's garbage. When I wanted a picture of salmon in the river, I didn't want pictures of cooked salmon in the river <laughs> right, you, right. you have to right. you have to learn how to like ask the right questions so it's yeah in a in a way i think that it could even have a role in improving our ability to think critically and to ask the right questions yeah. and to really get to the heart of the matter yeah yeah Definitely. And, and back back to music, I did have the thought that AI would be best at emulating electronic ambient music than anything else. If you tell it to, to do like a, you know, like like a folk song on guitar with like a, a woman singing, it's going to be fake sounding because it's very hard to emulate a human voice and and, uh, you know, an acoustic guitar. But like electronic ambient music, it seems like AI would be pretty good at generating that um so but i still don't feel threatened I, I don't do this for a living and people will still you know follow me and and because i'm a person who makes good music and and I, i'm not worried about it but I, but i do think if someone's trying to have their music used in a commercial fashion that they should probably be worried because i think in the near future if um if there's some, you know, video that some company's making for whatever purposes and they need some some background music, I think AI would be pretty good at generating that. And, yeah, you know, there's going to be programs if they're not already out there just right around the corner where it's like, I need some music that's, you know, somber and, you know, and then you can just instruct it. No, a little bit less dark, a little more mm -hmm. like this. And it'll just do it. And it's in the background and it'll fit the bill. And um, yeah, I mean, that's right around the corner. Let's check out another track from one of Daryl's 2023 releases. This comes from the album Gardens in Glass, and the track is called Suncatcher. Here on Ambient Discourses.
how do you feel about relating to the commercialization of music and the music industry and how it's ever evolving and and continuing um, to become more and more difficult to you know be be heard or to be found by like the labels how do you how yeah. do you feel about the commodification of music well there, there's no way around it i mean i'm i do feel fortunate that i got in when i did uh i mean over the past 20 years i've been i've been doing this slowly kind of getting more recognition I mean, i'm still pretty small potatoes in the grand scheme of things but i see younger people getting started having real trouble getting just any sort of recognition because the, the the field is just so swamped yes i mean if you're just starting now with you know band camp and streaming it's like oh my god there's so much music out there it's unbelievable so i so i do feel like i got kind of a head start um and I've recently been um, getting some some help from um, someone who 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 is part of one of the labels I work with, who knows a lot about music promotion, and and they've been because I I've I want to get good at it. I want to keep my head above the water. I want to someday. I don't know. Maybe even after I retire just be able to supplement my income with this like i'd like to be semi i mean i am, I am semi-professional at this but i would like to actually be professional and, and and be able to do what i do and 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 actually you know support myself just to, to some degree with it um but okay i'm making it sound like the money is important to me it's not <laughs> i've got a job i don't care about the money it's more about the recognition and 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 getting my music heard by more people and that's i guess the main goal and so I'm, i've been getting tips on how to like properly release an album like i i've been doing this all this time i've been self-releasing stuff lately uh and partially because i record so much music the past year past two years under my own name I, there, there, there wasn't a label out there who would release six albums for me in one year <laughs> so it, it has to be right. self-released so, so i just needed to kind of learn the ropes a little bit better um or like before when I self-release something, I would maybe do one like, uh, I don't know, social media post like, hey, got something coming out next week. And then I'd put it out and then I'd hope some people noticed it. But I've, I've gotten, a, I'm, I'm trying to learn the ropes a little bit about how to how to um, actually release something properly and, you know, emailing the journalists and uh, all, all that sort of stuff. And um, so far, it, it's a, it's been a big improvement over, um, over how I was doing it before. So... Do you have any tips that you would suggest for the newer musicians that are starting out? They're struggling with ego. They're struggling with trying to f figure out how to get attention out there. Do you have any recommendations okay. for them? Well, number one, I would say don't give up because if you do it for a few years and then, and then quit, it really will just go right into obscurity if you keep doing it and keep doing it well and seriously and um you know pouring yourself into it year after year it will get noticed and if you don't give up then you'll continue to get noticed and it'll it, it, it'll build from there so that that's the number one thing is is make it a like a lifelong passion or if not that's fine too <laughs> yeah but but you know do do what you want to do but um Hmm. I I think what's worked for me in the past is not to um, like approach like a a record label, for example, with a you know, what can you do for me? Will you put this out for me? But to kind of like like buy music from a from a label, for example, that you like, so they get to know your name. You're like a fan, and and you know you comment on their posts and, and you become a fan and at some point after buying some other stuff and supporting them you could say hey by the way i write music too would you want would you like to hear it and then they they might you know be like oh you're so-and-so who you know who's who's like a a supporter of us and then you know so um i think that's important in in the the music creation process especially for younger artists that are starting out they many have 
a perspective that it's they're they're trying to express the ego they're trying to express themselves and with some of the more mature and by mature i mean they've been around for a long time and they've seen everything it for them for many of them it has become less about feeding the ego and more about uh, remaining true in their expression in creating art and it has mm. very little to do with how people respond or how popular something becomes but that it becomes um, a genuine expression from themselves in their observations of yeah. the cosmos how how have you navigated through that uh, in finding do, like have you found balance in between uh, feeding the ego and self-expression and promoting self versus um, further along in the continuum of expressing your creativity for the sake of expression for the sake of creating art or creating um, yeah. something for people to respond to what where, where where do you find yourself in that continuum well i mean i would say that that i always create my music for the sake of creating it it is awesome to have listeners and I'm, i feel grateful that that i do have an audience but um i think uh for me i i i kind of have multiple multiple projects now and so when i do a pulse emitter album um I want to make it like as thrilling to listen to as possible, not just for myself, but for anyone who listens to it. Like, like, like I, I, I really want it to be exciting, um, you know, exciting ambient music, if you will. <laughs> um, uh, and I mean that, yeah. And, um, and then, uh, when I do this stuff under my own name as Daryl Gretsch, it's, it's more personal and it's, um, it's made to be calming. Like I, I don't allow myself to, to do anything. I mean, I wouldn't want to get too clever with it and, and do stuff that stands out. It's really just supposed to be um, something that, that, that when someone hears it, they can just relax. Um, I don't think though that that, you know, privilege comes with having done this for years and having an audience i think someone who's just getting started who who wants to just do really really simple music might find success in that i mean i'm not i'm not i'm not sure there's like a need there's like a need for someone to express their ego at as a new artist i'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that correlation with with some musicians i've talked to um some have the perspective that the the commodification of music and the 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 drive within to get your voice heard um s some musicians i've talked to come across at, or or rather have the perspective that they think that it's kind of the shallow end of the pool so to speak but the deep reservoir mm -hmm of de the deep human experience and less about expressing self and more about observing life, mm. observing humanity, observing the world around us and our experiences from that and meditating on that visual on or whatever the concept is and then responding in turn with music so I guess, I guess that's where I'm coming from. This, this continuum of it's very easy to, once you kind of get a hold of your own voice and kind of you figured out your maybe your sound or your um, the way that it feels natural for expressing yourself. That that's kind of the the easy way in to music. But then further along that continuum, it, there's there's this deeper perspective of wow, this is this is common to all this this particular thing is common to the human experience mm -hmm. how can i shine a light on that and 
maybe turn it around and show different perspectives, different thoughts or different feelings and expressions about that. So that's, that's probably more where I'm coming from with the, the, the question of where, where do you find yourself on that continuum? Do you, um, do you find yourself, um, are there, is there anything in particular that, that really has excited you about um, diving deeper into your musical expression? And if I need to um, restate the question, I no, no, no. I think it's good. It's. I mean, this is getting you know pretty deep, and yes. <laughs> so it is. Sorry, a, a little no. Get no, your life it, preserver on, folks. We're going deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, my music seems to be emotional, and it seems to be um, coming from how I feel when when i you know uh when i think about um different nature settings or the seasons or the sky or just or just imaginary things but you know i, I kind of realized recently that it's not even the case for other artists like i was listening to an interview with laurie anderson and she was saying i'm not into expressing myself it's not it's not emotional i, I like to see like let's see what we can do with sound like it has nothing to do with with, with emotions, <laughs> and that's that. So that's when I, you know, I heard that, and I realized I am actually. That's kind of not how I work. I, I I I'm an emotional person, and and my music is 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 emotional, and it's based on how how I feel about things. But um, but then there's there's visions that that I get from the sound. Like my song titles come about after the fact. Usually, um, so I'm sitting there, and and I you know I'm just feel like writing some music. And how do I feel right now, and what do I want to hear? And then I I make it, and then as I'm editing it later, I realize, man, this this just sounds like I'm whatever floating on a pink cloud or whatever. And I title it <laughs> floating on a pink cloud or whatever it is. Um, and then I, you know, I'm working on music, working on music, and then I have all these songs, and then I realize, you know, there's like eight songs here about floating in the clouds, and then there's like another eight which are kind of more like like floating at the bottom of the ocean. I think I have two albums here. One of them is one of them is about the, you know, the or you know, whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answers answers the question oh, it, or it, not. It, it does. I think. It, it answers for me in a roundabout way. So if I understand you correctly, or it's it's really about the, the connectivity between your emotional experience and and your finding a way to express that. And sometimes it just vis viscerally just comes out of you, and you you know you yeah. have very little brain power, I guess, and not brain power, but very little mechanical introduction of components to sear it and it just pour, pours I right know out. what i need to do yeah yeah right. yeah I, I yeah right right yeah and on the contrast like to you say with you've got people that are much more scientific or mathematical in their approach to music creation where it's really about cerebral yeah, yeah. it's very cerebral and no emotion at all uh, in fact, you know, even some noise artists that uh, yeah. that I've been exposed to, they're like, "Yeah, we don't want you to like our music. <laughs> it is intentionally disturbing, or it's intentionally disruptive. It's meant to, yeah, you know, cr conjure up some sort of um, experience or mental imagery." Um, right. So, yeah. Right. Right. And, 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 and I can respect all of that. I just, you know, right. yeah, for sure. <laughs> but for those of us that are very emotional in music, I'm, I'm right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out another track from Daryl Gretsch. But this comes from his Pulse Emitter Project from the album Dusk. Here is the track The Road to Thrax here on Ambient Discourses.
tell me about your your latest album, album under your name, Daryl Gretsch, uh, Gardens and Glass. What? Tell me what precipitated it when you were creating. What what was your fuel of inspiration, and how how did that the the evolution process come along about for you with that album? Okay, yeah. So so, so again, like I mentioned before, I um. You know, I write music. I write when I'm in one of those zones where I'm writing a lot of music. Um, I'm just it's it's one thing after another, and then I kind of realize later which which tracks need to be grouped together because I, at least for for these recent albums, I do kind of like having a similar emotion on each album instead of a variety of 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 tracks. I. <clears throat> I don't like this idea of like, well, I'm in a certain mood. I want to put on an album that's in that mood and it's not going to switch on me. So anyway, for, for this one, the inspiration is, is a lot of like plant energy. Um, and also like uh postmodern architecture, like some like atriums, mm-hmm with uh with with plants or or even like a shopping mall where where you have glass ceiling you've got tropical plants indoors like a like a terrarium or a Mm -hmm. or a botanical garden um i I really love those sort of places um i mean botanical gardens more than like shopping malls but 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 even walking around the mall sometimes i'm like this is a is a cool vibe you know it's with it's like almost a combination. Surreal. It's surreal. This yes. this mix of concrete and tile yeah. and stuff. But then you yeah. get these tall spires of trees and natural light. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Natural light. Exactly. So I, I like that, um, especially if the architecture is something really cool. And so I um that's kind of the, the energy for for this particular album. What what was there anything that when you, when you sat down was there something that kind of initially sparked your imaginations that said you know what I want to do pl- something with plants what kind of how how did that evolve for you um i think as i mentioned before i think it's kind of like i just uh have the type of music i want to hear in my head at that moment right, okay. based on how i'm feeling and i and, and I make it, and then later, um, as I'm working on it more, I'm it, it starts to take shape, and it starts to sound like like a sun catcher in a window with with like beams of light shooting out of it. And so I, you know, I, I'll title it something like that, "Sun Catcher," for example, one of the songs on that on this particular album. So, I mean, where does it come from? I. I don't know. And it's sometimes it starts with a certain feeling and a certain emotion. And then as I'm working on it, I, I kind of realize where the music wants to go. And then I kind of aid it along go, going towards its, you know, its place. So it isn't, you know, I don't know that it's always like I had the vision for how I wanted it to be from the very start. As it evolves, I have new ideas and, and I'll add parts. And I imagine that's true for a lot of people as they work on music, that the song takes on a life of its own, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. when you're, you, you mentioned some, uh, to the, something to the effect that there's, you're, you're almost nurturing the music along in this process and it almost has this implication that there is this um, force behind that, that, that is just ushering the music through and you're kind of the conduit and the shepherd of the metaphorical shepherd of that experience yeah can you tell me more about your thoughts about that about music inspiration coming from this bigger cosmic force or this energy what what does that look like for you i guess it's it's kind of like it's kind of world building in a way it's kind of like uh what makes people different than than other animals i mean we're like like gods in our own way we're like creators you know Mm -hmm. um so it 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 is kind of like world building for me like i have a 
a scene that's that's taking shape and then um i i at some point i started going with where it's you know going with the scene instead of maybe going with the original seed that started it um so it's i mean it's i think it's a very beautiful perspective uh, of this idea of world building you're a creator you are painting the atmosphere you're painting the foundation you're sculpting the the nuances and yeah i think yeah and know, i think go ahead. yeah i think world building sorry is um is is a term used in like science fiction and fantasy and i do read a lot of science fiction and fantasy and i enjoy that genre you know in in, in film and tv as well so um yeah world building what yeah. have been some some of the sci-fi books or movies and or shows that have kind of deeply influenced you in that, in that idea of world building well um i guess i'll start with the ones that i actually wrote music inspired by there's um jack vance he's either an author uh he was writing uh from like the 50s through like the 80s really influential to a bunch of people that came after him um his 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 books really paint a lot of pictures in my mind um uh there's uh dan simmons wrote the series called hyperion the hyperion pantos and and that's some really really excellent science fiction um and i wrote some music inspired by that um, i mean i've been a big star trek fan since i was a kid um I, I don't watch a lot of it anymore. I kind of burned out. I watched so so much Star Trek in my whole life. <laughs> I can't even right. handle it anymore. It's just like I've seen every write, episode. You could probably write your own episodes at this point. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You, you figured right. out the formulas. You figured out, all right, yeah. We could, yeah. Fit, we could fit this into a 59-minute episode. Good. Let's yeah, go. <laughs> or AI could probably do an even better job of that, I imagine. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there's there, there's a few recent things even even that I like. Um, there's uh, this show Silo that I'm watching, and uh, I like the Orville a lot. And, um, um, and have some yeah. of the soundtracks from these? Uh, how have or how have the soundtracks from some of these uh, sci-fi shows, movies, and whatnot have they influenced you at all? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, everyone would would say this, but when I first got into Blade Runner, that was a big and big, yeah. you know, inspiration on me. Like that, the movie and the soundtrack are just amazing. The original Blade Runner it was is, uh, yeah, m made a huge impact on me when I first started watching that, uh, which was like in the nineties. Um, um, I'm thinking of 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 some soundtracks like. Uh, some of the spookier moments of 2001 a space odyssey and, and like solaris andre tarkovsky solaris has a really cool electronic uh soundtrack um have you heard the soundtrack from dune that like the newest the latest the newest incarnation of it i actually haven't no oh, oh you you have a homework assignment <laughs> okay <laughs> it's the I forget the name of the composer offhand, and I really should know it. But you know, my finite ability to remember everything is well finite. And the the soundtrack to Dune is otherworldly, and he had they had hired this vocalist, this female vocalist that had this ability of. Is it Hans Zimmer? Did Hans I, Zimmer do it? I, I think so. I'm gonna look it up right I'm, now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wikipedia. Um, there's there's yeah, Hans Zimmer. There's this woman that they hired to do these vocals for, and it it didn't mm. sound human at all. It sounded very tribal and otherworldly. Yeah, I actually watched a little documentary now that I think about it on Hans Zimmer's soundtrack for the movie, but I haven't watched the movies yet, but um, uh, um it's just something else. Yeah, it's... I need to see that. Okay. All right. Yeah. You you've convinced me. <laughs> I I I read the book a couple years ago. I re reread the the first book and I I love it so much and so now for some reason I feel hesitant to 
to watch the film, but it, it is supposed to be good. And I, oh, it yeah, is. it's, I yeah, will check it out. It is remarkable. It's, I think that that would be for any other ambient artists out there that are looking for any sort of inspiration to get you out of your own head and start thinking about other possibilities. That's yeah. a fantastic starting point to give you ideas. Um, on along that note, where where else do you look for inspiration to get you out of your own ruts and your own? Because we all have them, right? You know, we all have our own methods that we tend to lean in on and rely on because they're they're tried and true and they're they're repeatable but are there yeah. other things that you look to to challenge you and get you thinking outside of convention well travel comes to mind and the past few years i haven't traveled as much as as much as i used to but traveling is one of the best things to really you know put yourself into a new scenario and there, there, there's nothing like it there's nothing like being in another land walking around um i mean not traveling and hiking is a big one getting out into nature uh which thankfully i live in an area where there's all sorts of that around um i mean yeah reading and movies of course but um yeah i guess travel would be my number one answer to that going going somewhere new is, is uh definitely a good way to refresh your life you know what have been some your like top 10 travel moments that really left an indelible impression on you and and was transformative oh, that's a good question um Thanks. I was that in Belize. Was, thanks for chat GPT for that assistance. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay. I was like, well, I'm not answering it then. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's funny. Um, I, w I was in Belize walking around on, on, on some Mayan ruins. Um, that is a cool experience to be, to be, uh, to, 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 to visit any ancient sites is, is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, I'll never forget walking, uh, you know, exploring Mayan ruins. Um, mm, take us there. Take us. What what were you feeling and, and what was running through your mind as you're walking through the ruins? Well, they're all, I mean, there's ruins there that are in various states of decay. Some of them are preserved rather nicely. And some of the ones that, that are really overgrown are also really uh, impactful. Um, you just can't help but picture what what life was like back then for the people living there walking around in that and, and just trying to envision what it what it looked like at the time and then just seeing the way like the jungle has kind of reclaimed some of those some of those areas um i mean it's you can't help but be moved yeah and what what do you when you have those experiences when you when you experienced uh, either a cultural phenomenon an architectural phenomenon how do you typically um, take that experience and capture it in some a way that you can then maybe use it musically later do you right do, well, you, do you tend to journal about that do you take photographs videos what what how do you respond? right well well certainly take photos like like everyone else but um but usually then whenever i am done with a trip and i and i come home it's like very clear when i'm you know that i have been inspired by a place and it doesn't always happen sometimes i'll go on a trip and i'll and my wife might even ask me are you gonna write some music about this and I'm like well we'll see I don't know. But, and, and and then maybe i don't you know but like i don't know i went to utah for example and saw some like petroglyphs like carved into the side of a rock face and and went to arches and canyon lands and it was like it blew me away right and i come home and it's like i start writing music all about it i went to crater lake in oregon national park and was so inspired about it that i like wrote a whole album about it it was like I had like a vision quest when I was there. Like it really impacted me. Um, so yeah, um, there's yeah, there, there's some times where where I just the inspiration's so heavy. There's like no way that I'm not gonna feel the need to 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 write some music inspired by it. 
but you never yeah i kind of never know when when something's going to hit me that that way or not i have a perfectly enjoyable time and, and not feel any need to right. you know express anything about it later <laughs> right you're just uh enjoying the moment and you're being present in, in that space and yeah. yeah you don't have to have the compulsion to create as a response right right exactly mm. let's check out one more track shall we this is the title track from Daryl Gretsch's latest album, Gardens in Glass, here on Omnia Discourses.
music on a, on a slightly related but different note, you know, music has become this very solitary experience for people. It used, it used to be more communal, right? Like I think back to, back yeah. to the seventies and eighties, um, you know, I was around <laughs> mm-hmm. and, <Yeah. laughs> you know, you, you go out and you buy that new record, or you buy that new tape and you immediately bring it home and you know, like, you call your friends and like, Hey, I got the new album. You got to come over and check it out. And you, you have yeah. this communal listening experience. Whereas yeah. nowadays it's so solitary. You, you're, you know, it's not necessarily wow. good or bad. It's just different. How do you feel about this transformation about how we consume music? And do you feel, and how do you feel about the role of community in, in, in consuming and enjoying music? That, that's like a really good point because I mean, prior to the internet, which I think kind of changed is what the main thing that changed everything mm-hmm. that and, and the invention of the Walkman, like everyone would listen to what's on the radio. You know, everyone is having the same experience musically. Right. Um, I think when the Walkman came around, uh, that whole thing, I mean, I was really into listening to, uh, I, I would record music from the hearts of space onto cassette tapes and walk around listening to them and like got so into that very solitary, very solitary experience. Uh, so we can thank, uh, you know, the Walkman for that. But then, um, uh, with, with, with internet music and, uh, streaming services and no one's listening to the same thing. I mean, I guess there's still, there's still pop music, but like the radio is kind of taking a back seat. Um, I don't have any problem with it. I think it's just the way the world is now. Everyone used to watch the same TV shows, listen to the same radio programs before that, read the same newspapers. And like now because of, because of the internet, people consume what, what they want to consume. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, and there's all these little, uh, you know, clicks and micro cultures and all these, all these things. And, and like, that's, that's beautiful. It's just life. There's no, there's no going back to the way that it was. So, so I think it's fine. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting. If you go back even further than the 70s and 80s, you go back to, um, you know, ancient times, music and dance uh, was like uh, deeply entwined in 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 cultures and um, in like every culture. And it's just the, 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 the modern world. It's like a, it's a, a totally different thing. Do you feel that there is anything that we can do as musicians to not necessarily change that? but to almost reintroduce the idea of communal listening with um, with a newer audience who, you know, quite honestly, have never experienced the idea of sitting down and just listening to music together. What do you, do you feel that there is a role that musicians can play in introducing that community? And what does that look like for you? I have no idea. I can't, I mean, I can hardly picture it except for some sort of a, like a public concert or something like, right. like, and maybe like that's, that. maybe it's, that's all that's left <laughs> apart from any, uh, ingenious ideas that people come up with. And, and maybe the reality is that concerts are our communal experience now. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, I don't know. Things are so different. I think, um, just like the way people don't read books as much. I, I don't know that people even listen to music as much as they, you know, watch TikTok videos and things <laughs> like that. So, or play video games. I mean, those are like the medium nowadays. It's, it's games and, and short form video. I, I think in the seventies, you know, music books, maybe comic books or something like, like, like there was, those were like king you know music was was like king but now i i i don't even know that that's true anymore and so i mean how do you how do you feel about that that transformation and that change what how do you feel about things becoming more and i hate to use the word commodification or commoditized uh but where it's become almost disposable you and you have this brief moment yeah. when you're engaged with TikTok or the apps or whatever, 
and psh, okay, it's gone. <laughs> how? Yeah. How, how do you feel? I about mean, that? it's. I I feel like it's those those. Those medias are, are are shallow and and pretty vapid and and um, I think even the people consuming them realize it and and some people are okay with that and other people will want something deeper and will seek out something more more meaningful. So, I mean, it is what it is. I guess it's not. <laughs> it is <laughs> nothing it, I can do about it. Right, and trying to do something to change that whole you know you're basically trying to swim upstream at that point and in yeah. a raging river <laughs> yeah yeah i just have i just have to be um you know happy with what i'm doing and thankful that other people are listening and that's mm. and i am so um yeah yeah well i can tell you that you know i'm I'm really grateful that you've sent your music our way and that we've had the opportunity to play it. And I, one of the, the main tenets of why I, I do this to begin with, why I have created the, the Relay Station program and now the podcast have these conversations is because I want, I, I understand as a creator, as a musician myself, the the value of when someone listens to your to your creation deeply and and fully engaged and present and then has something to say about it you know that like wow this that really really moved me and and so it's become this this drive this desire inside to i want to give as many musicians and creators as I can the experience that I I know that I would crave and I would walk away going oh man I just wow they list they loved what I made <laughs> and and that's I think that um, maybe that's our way to go about coming back to creating community with music is. Mm. is finding people that we really connect with musically and when we have our own personal deep listening experience in our own isolation mm -hmm. come out of that in almost like a shamanic approach where you're you allow yourself to be enveloped with the other person's music and you listen fully and attentively and observe and be introspective in that meditate on it and then come out of that experience and go with gratitude and expression to the artist and go you know i really connected deeply with this and here's why please keep keep at it and not yeah. necessarily for my sake for because you know the last thing i want but it's got to be fun for you though too right. i mean it's got to be enriching right. it has to it has right? to be a genuine expression from yourself and not um, not this kowtowing over to you know please the listener but like Robert Rich made this comment where one of his recommendations for new artists is that if you want to create the most universally relatable music it has to come from a really deep place inside because in the deep spaces within us is where the purest mm -hmm. water comes from, right? And so yeah. it's the most purest form of expression when it comes from a really deep well. And to, wow. to have that deep yeah. well, you have to dig deep. You have to be more observant and less, less vocal and more listening. You know, it's it's like yeah. the old adage: we have two ears, yeah. one mouth. Respect one mouth. the ratio yeah. appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So for me, it's yeah. been this transformative experience of you know, I'm going to remain silent for a while, and yeah, I, I still make music and and I promote it when I can. But I've had this fundamental shift where I want to listen to artists like you and 
your creations. Listen intently and then engage in conversation and go, you know, I really thought what you made was really meaningful and a beautiful expression yeah. of the reality around us. And yeah. that's my hope for all of us as creators, that we can hone that ability to cultivate community by just listening and listening to each yeah. other. There was an observation made about the punk music scene back in the late 70s and the 80s when punk was really underground. And it was all about, um, you know, when you had a show, you brought all your friends out. And, you know, if your friends were in a punk band, you were like, hey, I want you to open for, I want you to open with us or even shoot. I want you to be the headline. So it was this supporting each other kind mm -hmm. of community. And yeah. And I think that as ambient artists, it's as diverse as the music that we have, I think we have this unique opportunity to generate our own community. We don't need, we don't need yeah. the listener to do that. We can do that within our own selves and by being active participants in each other's music. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I, I, I really appreciate uh, that, that you've listened to my music and that you hear something in it and that you had me on this podcast. I think it's I think it's a, a cool thing you've done. And if anyone listening to this, you know, wants to reach out to me for any reason, you know, questions about creating music or anything else, you know, feel free because I'm all about I'm yeah. all up for, for being a member of a community. That's, you know, what, that's what it's all about. I don't actually like being too isolated so <laughs> <laughs> we'll gladly point them in your direction all right please do on that yeah. note daryl thank you so much for taking the time with me it's been just a, a pleasure and a delight not just to hear your music and listen intently of course but to really just get to know you and to hear your thoughts your perspectives and it's just wonderful to have that sort of connection with another artist another creator yeah Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking to you and meeting you. And um, yeah, I feel like I know you already. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll stay in touch. That's, that's all that I could ever ask for. Thank you so much, Daryl. <laughs> it's a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much. Wow. I, I feel near speechless, which is a very difficult thing to accomplish. <laughs> but I feel entirely enriched by having had that conversation with Daryl. And on, on the tail end of the conversation, I feel like I've acquired a friend and a companion out in the music industry, someone to share in some sort of community-based experience. And that's my wish for you too, that as we move forward together, that you will find community among other musicians, composers, creators, other human beings and that your life too will be enriched in the process. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Ambient Discourses, where we have conversations with musicians and composers who create musical experiences and sonic landscapes. Until next time. <laughs>